Michael Bush is on the Chicago Cubs and was part of an interesting trade this offseason. So let's get into it right now with this prospect profile. Scotty Braun with Baseball America's J.J. Cooper and Carlos Colazzo. J.J., what did you think of this trade in the offseason? There's a pretty good name in Jackson Ferris moving over to the Dodgers, and it obviously didn't seem like they had a place for Michael Bush, and hopefully he can thrive with the Cubs, right? It was relief, uh, I think, was my emotion because – It was time. It was time for Michael Bush to be a big leaguer. When we talk about prospects making their debuts, we're often talking about guys who are 20, 21 and going, wow, look at how this guy's made it so fast. In Michael Bush's case, if he was in a different organization, he might have been up in the big leagues for a year or two, but he was a Dodgers prospect. And he was a Dodgers prospect who was trying to play, trying to figure out a way to carve out a spot because Freddie Freeman was at first base, so that's his best position. He wasn't going to supplant Freddie Freeman. Let's see if he can play second. Let's see if he can play third. The trade frees him up to do what he can do best, which is go out there and hit and be a first baseman, which is the position that he's always probably been best destined to play. But, Carlos, when you were watching him at North Carolina, did you think that there was a chance that he was going to play somewhere else, or did you think at the end of the day it was more going to be about the bat and probably not a whole lot of defensive value? Yeah, it's funny to think about this now because actually during his draft year at UNC, one of the things he did was experiment at a number of other positions. He entered uh, college there and played first base initially, but I think to show some defensive versatility, he played a little bit of left field. He played a little bit of second base. At the time, it was not great. Uh, you were still drafting him in the first round because of his bat and his bat alone. It doesn't sound like he was ever uh, going to be a great second baseman or a great left fielder. He's just not uh, the guy who's going to move around the quickest. He's a below average runner. His hands are just okay at other positions. So I think this is a phenomenal trade for him because, like you said, it puts him at his best defensive position and it just lets him hit and mash and focus on doing those things. He's got a chance for above average hitting ability, he's got a chance for above average power. Uh, and like you said, JJ, when we heard this trade happened, um, we were very excited just because he's going to be entering his age 26 season. It feels like Michael Bush should have been in the big leagues for multiple years now. Um, and just the fact that this gives him an opportunity, I think is great. And while maybe you would prefer if he could play a second or a left field and bring this offensive profile, um, just depending on your team construction, that really wasn't going to work well for you. So I think this is a really good fit for him. I think he's got a chance to be an above average hitter and maybe a solid everyday regular um, if he does live up to those offensive expectations we have for him. Yeah, JJ, what do you project? Because this looks like a lefty that can handle lefties, but there were some caution signs that probably made it easier for the Dodgers to not give him a spot you know, on their big league roster full time. In addition, obviously, the playing time issue that they would have with him but it looked like at times there were struggles against high velocity fastballs in the minor leagues i don't know if you saw anything else that stood out maybe you know some ground balls when he was up with the with the dodgers that kind of scared them off even though it was you know not that much time but what do you think i i think that the cubs are going to be able to put him in a position to kind of be they don't they're not expecting him to be their best player second best player, third best player, they're going to be able to put him in a position where, okay, maybe there are days where it's like, you know what, this is a good day to get Cody off his you know, feet a little bit. We're going to slide Cody Bellinger to first base for a day kind of thing where you pick your spots a little bit. But I just think that he fits very well for them in a team that, that really has a chance to be sneaky good this year to me. Uh, I, the Bellinger signing obviously plays a big role in this. But if you look at and said that the Orioles, I think, have the best farm system, not just as far as overall talent, but close to the minors, majors talent, actually, close to the majors talent. The guy that had a Norfolk team last year, those are major baseball America minor league team of the year. But the Cubs, they had the double A team that won the double A, uh, the, the Southern League title. And you look at that group and you look at adding a Bush to an Owen Casey, adding him to uh, a pitching staff that has a Cade Horton that could help them at some point this year. There are a number of close to the big league guys that this Cubs team has that should filter in and adding Bush to that kind of gives this team a chance to have a nice blend of veterans who already know what they're doing, but adding in some youth, some uh, kind of a, a youth movement that should boost them as well, give them a little bit more energy, but also give them some low, less expensive guys who could produce and, and hit, not just maybe in the middle lineup, but give you that, that six, seven, eight lineup that deepens the lineup as well. And if he helps them, whatever, 
JJ, because Cubs fans are anxious to get back to the playoffs. But will there be the chance of regret with the return package that the Dodgers get in this deal? Is there super high upside here, even if it's high risk? Uh, it's Jackson Ferris, and you, who's already a very good prospect. And anytime you trade with the Dodgers now, there's that risk because they're really good at developing every aspect uh, in player development. So you trade someone to the Dodgers, and you look at a Kyle Hurt. You look at we could go through a list of guys who's like, oh, that was a modest trade at the time, but it turned up and turned into a guy who turned into something because the Dodgers have unlocked something in him. Well, in Jackson Ferris, you're talking about unlocking talent in a pitcher who was already one of the better young pitching prospects in the minors last year. Yes, this absolutely could come back to bite the Cubs in the long term, but that's partly because if you give a guy to the Dodgers, got a good chance of turning into something. <laughs> Carlos, do you feel the same way? What do you know about Ferris? Oh, he's got tremendous arm talent. I, I think this is a good trend. Like, I wouldn't be too concerned if I was a Cubs fan. I think what maybe should make you feel better about this trade, um, if you're worried about trading with the Dodgers, which I think is a, a legitimate concern, is they're almost forced to trade Michael Bush. I mean, he's been in the system for so long. We did have him ranked as a top prospect in the Dodgers system, a system we think is still quite good. Ferris still does have some some adjustments he needs to make. The control needs to be a little bit better. He needs to sync up the delivery at times. Just the inconsistency from start to start, uh, I think, needs to improve with him. But with Bush, you've got a player that you really don't need to project on at all. I mean, we've talked about the fact that he's a little bit older, but he's got a mature approach and he's had that approach for a long time now. I think he's going to take really professional quality at bats. I think in general, he does a pretty good job of lifting the ball and pulling the ball. So accessing that power is is pretty routine for him at this stage. So there's more risk that the Dodgers are taking on. And I think they're probably well positioned to make the most of the talent um, that Jackson Ferris does have. But from the Cubs perspective, you're getting a plug and play big leaguer. Uh, and I think that's something that you probably are going to have to live with in a trade like this. So I think it's good for both teams, just considering the strengths and weaknesses in the, in the farm system and at the major league roster. So let's finish with a deeper look at 2024 for the Cubs and Michael Bush, JJ. I think most fans were expecting more from Chicago this off season. You know, they pick up someone like Hector Neris for their bullpen. We'll see what Imanaga looks like in that starting rotation. Of course, they bring back Bellinger, but Bush is a big part of what they did in the offseason. I think they'll be banking on him to kind of bring the return that you guys are talking about. Are we underrating the Cubs because of what Bush can be and what some of their youngsters can be? You imagine maybe at least one or two of them on the position player side are going to make their way up in addition to Cade Horton. And so we're not really projecting them with the uh, you know wins models right now in, in terms of what could be coming up from the minor league system? Uh, we could be a little bit, especially I think expecting 20 homers from Bush isn't crazy considering, again, he is a ready, a big league ready guy. If he's not ready now, when is he going to be ready? He already has extensive upper level minor league experience. He's now being asked to do less defensively, which should help unlock the bat a little bit further. But the other thing that we have here is this is the NL Central. This is not a division where 95 wins is going to be needed to win this, probably. This is a division where the team that gets to 90 may have a good shot. And you look around the division, the, the, the Brewers have lost Corbin Burns. They're still going to be good. They're bringing up Churio. They're going to be still a solid team. But they lost Corbin Burns. The Reds, half the guys that we were counting on coming into the year, feels like, between Marte, between, they just seem like they're, they're having injury after injury after injury. TJ Friedel. So... This is a division that the Cubs are very well placed in to, to kind of maybe win this division because everyone else is struggling in ways as well. Yeah, you can rebuild quickly or at least quicker in the NL Central and kind of get back to prominence. That's what the Cubs are trying to do. I think it's kind of playoffs or bust this coming season for Chicago. Fans are starting to get a little bit anxious out there. So congratulations to Michael Bush. Should be a full-timer with the Cubs if he can deliver for them. And for more prospect profiles, we're here for you on the Baseball America YouTube channel. Especially look out for a top prospect getting called up. And then you can check back to this channel for kind of instant analysis and access to what that player could bring to the mix. So we'll see you for the next one on this BA prospect profile.